And welcome back to another week of Every Day We're Covering. Chris Parks, S.J. Munoz with you once again to uh, talk everything that's going on in, uh, well, the athletics world. But uh, we'll touch on a lot of different topics here this week, uh, from basketball to some football to everything in between. Talk about our picks and get you some more here, hopefully for this upcoming week as well. Uh, S.J., you survived. You made another trip around the sun. Congratulations. Yeah, four decades is quite some time. So uh, don't feel that old, but uh, when you when you count back the days, you're like, damn, that's that's pretty damn old. <laughs> but uh, we're still making it. Uh, every day is a good day on this side of the dirt. So uh, we're gonna go with that. Yeah, the the alternative is not uh, not what we want. So you gotta keep gotta keep aging. I was gonna be nice to you. I was gonna say you finally made it over thirty. But, hey, you yeah, gave that's it away. all right. Yeah, I'm like, we gotta we deal with uh you know we try to be honest with our picks. Got to be honest with our lives, right? Yeah, so yeah. we live not, in reality. And no, no BS coming from us. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we ain't trying to fool nobody here. Uh, so as we get rolling, of course, and uh, celebrating birthdays and all kinds of other fun stuff, we are uh, pouring back some beverages to do that as well. What do you got pouring over there this week? I went back to uh, Old Reliable, not necessarily the same uh, same pour, but the same company, the uh, Prairie Artisan Ales out of Oklahoma there. I actually hadn't had this one. It's their Slush, which is another sour. That's kind of mm-hmm. like I said, that's their, uh, that's their uh, you know, they're, they're a home run hitter yeah, there. Uh, so this one, yeah, yeah, this one has uh, the sour ale with strawberry, raspberry, lemon, and lime. So I'm, I got a little Ooh. fruity action going on over here. Got my getting one of the food groups down here yeah. in, in liquid form, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how much uh, real fruit is in there, but uh, it says there's a, it says there may be some. <laughs> but at a six point one percent, can't complain too much. There you go. We'll count it as a daily serving. Why not? You know. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, pouring one here from the uh, folks at uh, uh, Exile Brewing Company. Uh, although you know there is one thing about them that I, I don't necessarily do, uh, enjoy and love here in this state is because they they make one of the the big selling beers for the uh, Hawkeye NIL uh, deal. So I'm not not real fond of that. But as they, long as you're not <laughs> drinking that piss, you'll be good. <laughs> That's true. Just buy the right one. Uh, and they were making good beer before that, so I'll give them that. Uh, the uh, fine folks they are in Des Moines. And this is one. This one's kind of cool too. I, I may have mentioned it before, but uh, it's a beer called Ruthie. It's a, a gold lager, so it's a pretty standard, you know, kind of typical beer. But it's got a little bit more flavor than your, you know, average pilsner or light beer or whatever. Uh, a little bit more kind of malt going on there with it. But it's got a cool backstory. Uh, the uh, cover of the, the the label on the bottle uh, it kind of explains it all. There it was a bartender back in the day in Des Moines that had uh, a little bit of a shtick. She could uh, uh, balance some glasses on top of her knockers and pour beer into those glasses. And so folks loved that. She ended up being able to charge a little bit more money for that. Folks coming in and had herself a nice little business. Of course, she had to fight the law after that because they came out with all kinds of other charges. But uh, she she passed the test. She's a legend in the area. So it's kind of a cool story and a cool backstory on that one. <laughs> Yeah, if uh, that's going on, I, I, that, the story that if that's the story that came out, I can imagine all what other kind of activities that may have taken place in those uh, in those facilities there. Uh, not to get too, too uh, sidetracked here before you even get started, but I didn't notice you're you know drinking out of a, a bottle and like mine come, come in a can here. This is the, I drink. I don't know what it is, man. I'm just throwing it out there to you. Got to get your opinion on this. I, when I'm when I'm a can, I'm pouring it in a pint glass, right? Mm-hmm. But whenever I have a bottle, I drink it right from the bottle. I don't know if you're the same way or not. Uh, just like kind of a side thought I had, just. I don't know what it is about me. I just I don't drink out of the can. I don't know why. I just I guess just a, a cork, and I wanted to see if that was that was kind of your style as well. Yeah, you know, and honestly, I'm kind of I'm kind of usually pour both, and I actually did pour pour this one because I've got an extra one here with me holding it. So that's how I fooled you there. But um, I, I usually I will drink out of the bottle a lot because yeah, it, there's something about drinking out of the bottle that's just nice. I don't know. It just it, it comes out of that glass smooth. I don't know what the difference is of course the long neck has some deal you know to do with it but uh yeah and the cans yeah i mean especially if it's a beer that's of like a specific style especially like what you're drinking there with like a sour yeah you gotta pour that out into a glass like it's gotta it's gotta breathe a little bit i guess i don't know what it is it's it's definitely different now if you're in the you know you're out on the water you know cracking some coors lights yeah i'm gonna drink them out of the right can. Exactly, but still yeah. yeah anything else yeah i'm pouring it out i agree it's interesting to see how that evolution has changed too i mean you've seen so many companies 
now that we're doing bottles gone away from them and are doing cans. It seems to be the more economical thing, I think, for most breweries to do. So they've gone to the cans. They feel like it keeps their beer fresher, too. There are some issues, you know, with transport if you have them in the bottles, and I understand that. But, uh, you know, every every company's different, but it's funny how that changes and morphs over time. You know, especially the, the, the brewery right there in your backyard, uh, they, they're probably kind of kicking themselves a little bit there with a boulevard because they're so dedicated to the glass and they created that whole glass recycling program along mm-hmm. with it. They're probably not changing, you know, just because of that, too. So yeah, interesting how those factors change. Well, and it's not even a thing of being, you know, getting in that that level of, you know, being an expert or if you want to call it a beer snob type thing. I'm not <laughs> even going that route. Just as like, a, I don't know, I just like. You, you make these habits when you when you drink certain <laughs> beers or well, depending where you're at. And it's just like, I don't know what it is. I just I, mean, I guess never threw it out to you before. Just I always no matter no matter what it is, if it's a can, even if it's a obviously, if, like you said, if you're out doing something like, yeah, a lot of times you get cans in the warmer weather months because, you know, you, our, our HOA pool or whatever, hat, what neighborhood pool that we go to, you can uh, you obviously have to have cans. You can't have glass there. Yeah. So yeah. I buy a lot of cans in the summer when the when the weather is nice. But even if it's just a. You know, damn, you know, Bud Light or something simple, cheap, you know, like if I'm at home, I'm pouring in the glass. I don't know. It's just a it's <laughs> just a <laughs> habit I've formed over the years. I just was, you know, kind of kind of trying to get to the bottom of it. Maybe it's just, <laughs> it's just a habit. I don't know where it comes from. Well, it's easier to drink. That's for sure. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but most people, I think it's, you know, you want to drink it. If you had the desire to drink one fast, it'd be easier out of a glass than it would <laughs> out of a can. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah, it, it's a, everybody has their habits. Uh, and we'll, uh, of course, if you have any weird ones, that, that'd be awesome. That'd be a good kind of little side story there for a while folks will give us some, yeah. some things in. well i mean uh, either way if can or th- glass i'm still drinking at this point there's, there's no other yeah. uh, you know no other way that's it's being consumed by my body so i guess i'll uh i'll i'll be glad i'm still using the you know using as directed still I'll put it that way exactly still for co- for consumption uh last week's picks so uh, let's, let's talk about that a little bit uh i did so poorly early on in the week that i gave up uh, if you didn't notice, <laughs> first two that I had uh, rocking on that Tuesday night, but it was like Bizarro World for some reason. Uh, the a couple of games that I looked at, uh, Kansas was an eight and a half point favorite against BYU, and they were at home. And I thought, you know, Kansas going to get a nice win here. Uh, no, not the case. Uh, they lose the game. Seventy six sixty eight was the final there, so I uh, did not hit that one, obviously. And the other one started so poorly, I knew there was absolutely no chance it was going to happen. Tech was getting blown out in the first like ten minutes of the game against Texas. Uh, they lose it eighty one sixty nine. So it was backwards night in the Big Twelve, and I was on the wrong side of it. That's for dang sure. Uh, so that didn't start well for me. Uh, I went on a, after a couple more on Wednesday night in the NCAA, and uh, same story. Uh, I thought Creighton might have a little letdown after that big win over UConn, you know. I know they play well at home, and I'm not stupid to, to know that. But, boy, they same thing. It started off so fast against Seton Hall. Just got out to a huge lead, blew them out, 85-64. Seton Hall was getting 9.5, so I thought I was going to be safe there, but uh, not the case. And then Illinois, I needed a little bit more out of them. They were looking at uh, trying to give up 11 there to Minnesota. Yeah, and they only win at 105.97, so they didn't win the game, but didn't come out on the right side of that there for me. Uh, so that was that was a little rough, and uh, I know you were kind of mixed there those first two nights, SJ. You hit a couple, and you had a couple that didn't go your way too. Yeah, basically, uh, without going through all of them, because I did have several. Just right now, if you, you're rolling with me, you want to st- stick with the props, which basically be a lot of them <laughs> I'm, com- I'm doing uh, combos, points, rebounds, and assists in the NBA, that is. Uh, I know that Golden State game pushed earlier in the week. That was like an 11-point spread they were yeah. favored by. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Luka Doncic, I mean, if, if you see any bet with him, just I, – I, I I, mean, I'd I tail till you know, the wheels fall off. He's just been blowing it up, so uh, he's a pretty sure bet. I mean, the other night he was – 50 and a half was the total for points, mm-hmm. rebounds, and assists, and he, he freaking – he had that by the end of the third quarter damn near. <laughs> I think he might have hit, hit it right on at that point. So, yeah, we'll keep playing some of those props uh, – I know like Chet Holmgren was another good prop for me the other night for the Thunder over 16 and a half points, which to me, that was real low, but I know he was going against old Wemby. Uh, so mm-hmm. that was, uh, that, that was maybe kind of the reason it was a little low. And speaking of Wemby last night, he was, a uh, an easy p- play for me on the block three and a half took the over. That's, I mean, that's, again, that's just, uh, 
just kind of things you got to look out for. Just the the obvious. I know, mm-hmm. you know, they've, we've kind of been uh, conditioned to think like, oh, something's up, you know, if, if there's something obvious. But a lot of times it's, it's just it's just the obvious. Like, go ahead and play it. I mean, even if you lose, it's uh, it to me, it's worth the risk because the chance of him of them doing something like that or not is is, is better than better than not. So yeah. it's not always uh, Vegas knowing something more than you don't know. Sometimes uh, things get by the goalie there, too, or or just players playing so incredibly well that they're going to uh, you know beat that line no matter what. Yeah, sometimes maybe it just makes a lot of sense, and especially the way a guy's playing. We know how, you know, kind of momentum style the game of basketball is for sure, especially when we're playing these, that, you know, your guy gets on a heater, you're going to ride him until he's, you know, not not doing it anymore. Uh, you know, you had Tatum earlier in the week, too. He mm-hmm. hit over, you're over. Uh, he's been pretty consistent at doing that. Uh, you did hit the uh, nice under there on that Michigan Rutgers game I saw there later in the oh, week. Yeah, so that, yeah. That, that, that was mostly, yeah, based on the, <laughs> I guess, strength of, of Michigan, if you want to call it that. <laughs> and as, uh, as poor as they've been, that was kind of my reasoning for that. And even Rutgers, like, uh, just the way they play. I mean, saw them last night, uh, you know, against against Nebraska. Of course, the game I was watching closely. But just the way they play, it's, it's ugly. I mean, it, a lot of times it is effective because it gets you out of your game. Um, but just the way they play too is really ugly. I just, I didn't see a, you know, a, an offensive shootout and it didn't end up being that way either. You know, and I thought you were, you know, you did actually pretty well through, throughout the week. I kind of looked through some of your picks as you put them out there during the week. And of course, follow us on socials to get that stuff at SJM bets at Cherokee CP uh, there on Twitter. Uh, like I said, kind of got down on myself, so I was lacking there the rest of the week. But uh, uh, we'll, we'll turn things around, and I'll get back on the horse again. Uh, I, the only thing that kind of uh, got you there was the end of the week. Uh, Saturday oh, wasn't yeah. so good for that was, you. Saturday was rough, man. <laughs> woo, woo. That was the, and it was kind of like the same thing with that Marquette deal. Um, I, I Obviously, I, I didn't think that they would maybe win, but kind of like uh, Seton Hall in the week, they're getting quite a number, quite a few points. There was seven, yeah. so that one yeah. kind of – and then even – you know, the Gonzaga-St. Mary's game. St. Mary's d- decide not to show up. So if I'd have known that, of course, they're not going to hit. Because, I mean, 141 is not asking a lot. You know, no, 70, no. 74, 70, something like that. That's For those types of teams, that's not a lot of points. And I guess LeBron was still uh, celebrating his uh, 40,000 points because <laughs> he didn't he didn't come to play on that night either. And, of course, the UFC one I threw out there was more of a shot in the dark. And yeah. actually ended up being a close, pretty fairly close decision. But that was definitely one of those, like, and there's there's a maybe an outside shot here. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a and that was like a a real gamble there. I didn't have much confidence in that one. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, like you said, we, over time, it's it's worth taking a flyer and a risk every once in a while to try to hit that big plus line and get some good money out of something. It's, it, that's always fun. And of course, it depends on the things that you're interested in too. You know, if it's stuff that you're already enjoying, like watching. Why not have a little skin in the game and have some fun with it? That's what it's all about. That's what we love during college football season, for sure. It just get, it gets us watching games all throughout the day, and that's the same thing with any other sport. So we hope folks do that. Uh, you you bring up uh, the LeBron thing, and that was one kind of topic I did want to touch on real quick. Uh, first player in NBA history to ever reach the 40,000-point plateau. Obviously, that's a combination of things. You know, he's a, he's been a terrific player, but he's done it for a very long time. He's played for a long, long time. He's probably going to play another year, maybe two. We'll see uh, here moving down the road. So, you know, he's not done yet on, on adding to that total. So it does kind of beg the question a little bit. And obviously, we always say this whenever a record gets set. But is it going to be possible for anybody to to, to touch that record? Because it is, as it is right now, the guys you're looking at out there, it uh, doesn't appear that they're going to have the longevity in their career to even get close. Well, I mean, the, the first thing there is just being able to come right from high school is pretty much uh, yeah. non-existent yeah. these days. So that takes, you know, three years right there that you, you're behind the eight ball there. And the fact is you have to score at that, that high of a clip is is not not everybody can just do that i mean even uh even your most you know and then you got to be in a team that's going to make the postseason so you you know you got to play those game. extra you know 20 30 games whatever you might play that season so uh it's a lot of factors like you said but nonetheless still a you know an impressive thing and of course in the moment it's it's hard to see anybody you know touching that but then um that was said you know when the last record was set so eventually it will get there but i do i do foresee it being you know yeah, a decade or so before we even start thinking about discussion or, or pointing that direction of, well, maybe they got a shot if they, you know, can keep it up for another 15 years or whatever. It's just playing for that long is kind of, it's, 
it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around when you actually look at you know how, how much and then you count like i know this doesn't count for the the record but just you know the the, the olympic or the the international games and things that just playing that much basketball yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. wild it just any you know that's i mean i can't imagine that that i know it's phenomenal athletes and they're in you know better shape than anybody could ever dream to be but still the, just kind of the wear and tear on your body and how how you got to be feeling at this point in life just you see some of those retired athletes just i know people were giving shannon sharp a bunch of crap online the other day just about because the way he was walking i was like bro he played football for you know 15 years <laughs> he, he doesn't have half the same parts that he was born with you know of mm-hmm. course he's not going to walk like a normal human being but that's i mean that's the price you pay for i guess uh you know that level of greatness especially someone like lebron i could imagine he's some days it's hard to just get out of bed yeah well and that's that's the other side of it too not only do you have to have the you know the the skill and the yeah the get the right get on the right team all those other factors but you got to have a little luck along the way too because you know you don't have to have you need to have avoid those major injuries and he really has pretty much done that throughout his career I know people have complained a little bit about the you know taking a little time off here and there but you know whatever his age he can do whatever he wants and that they they and we all get so. vacation time you take it when you can get it right yeah exactly <laughs> but I mean another you know another thing that kind of plays in his favor too is just uh the lifestyle he seems to live of course we don't know these people mm-hmm. uh, you know i think we see him but all accounts i mean if you were doing something it'd be out there by now like he has not i mean yeah and i'm not even talking about like i mean breaking any laws i'm just saying like he's not out partying all the time um he's always in good shape so you know his diets yep. you know obviously you know you can afford the the best of the best but that doesn't mean everybody takes advantage of it so mm-hmm. uh, i mean there's not a lot of people that maybe if you had the stack of cash sitting in front of you, you know, $5 million or whatever, you know, don't eat, you know, don't eat French fries for five years. <laughs> it might be a, little, be a little easier to do it then, but uh, it's it's easier said than done just to, to live that lifestyle like day in and day out. So I think that kind of is more of a credit to anything is just, uh, you know, really being invested in, in your body, you know, and just your career, the whole thing, not just because there's a lot of athletes that get there just based on athleticism and they just, naturally gifted and that, that's all it is but uh to do it to do this in type achieve this type of level or reach this milestone it, it takes more than just you know whatever you want to call it God, you know god given really freak freak yeah. talents it's a lot more than just that yeah undoubtedly he's done all the right things to take care of his body and and, and really has been a a guy that's followed kind of that stuff to a, to a t throughout his career it sure seems like and and got himself to the right position to be able to have a a ton of success and do it for this long, but it certainly is impressive, you know, being able to play that long. I, I saw in the story that uh, now he, Vince Carter is the only guy that has played more NBA games than LeBron James at this point, And he will pass him, you know, if he continues yeah. like the other year that we expect him to play. So uh, it really, really is certainly uh, impressive on a lot of fronts, but yeah, we'll see. I, you know, I think it's going to have to be another one of those scenarios down the road where it's kind of this, we see this kid, coming up and, and everybody kind of knows, you know, this is the next guy that's, that's that good to maybe have a chance because uh, that's kind of what we had with, you know, when LeBron was coming up, a lot of people thought, Hey, this, this kid maybe has a chance to be that type of player. Uh, he had the body for it, you know, just kind of the way he's built helps too. But uh, yeah, it's going to take that certain special kind of guy to come along to, to be able to do it again um, and, and, and get to that point. You know, speaking of that type of level of reaching a milestone, there was another one that happened here over the weekend, too. And this has generated a little bit of talk just on the comparison front. And, of course, a lot of this is, you know, media driven and whatever. But uh, Caitlin Clark has certainly started to, you know, break a ton, just a ton of milestones this year uh, as far as passing point uh, total records. You know, she set the, the all time mark. Uh, within a season and then she set the record for women's basketball and then she's also now passed the NCAA Division I scoring record in general so uh, Pete Maravich was the guy that held the record before her Uh, she broke it this weekend as they played a game yesterday against Ohio State Uh, she dropped I think 35 in that game and got over the mark Uh, And it certainly was kind of like the next thing that, you know, we could talk about, you know, she got over that point plateau for the women's scoring record and everybody's like, oh, okay, well, what's the next thing that we can compare this to? And and that's where it came from. Now, it certainly isn't apples to apples. And and that's what is drawn some a little bit of this, uh, you know, discussion about it. And, And I don't think I think people need to take a step back and just 
kind of kind of look at the discussion for what it is. I mean, nobody's. I don't think anybody that's bringing this up is doing it to be hateful or to be you know discriminate discriminatory or whatever it may be. They're just pointing out you know how different the scenarios are. I mean, Pete Maravich played for three seasons. He did it in eighty three games. He scored three thousand six hundred sixty seven points. Uh, no three point line when he played basketball. So that makes a big difference. And he was a guy that shot from that range. So he would have added some more to his total. And then there was no shot clock. So it's a different game at that time time as well. Um, now, Caitlin Clark, uh, in comparison, has played 130 games in her career. Uh, so she's got kind of that full extra season under her belt. She's going to add some more to it, obviously, now as they move down the tournament road. Uh, so it'll get even larger, but it's, it's just different. And, and I think that's what people are pointing out. This isn't a, you know, apples to apples comparison. And, and, you know, that's why we need to look at it, I think, through a different lens. You know, it all kind of, to me, it starts with whenever, I don't know when this started. And obviously the online, you know, crowd is probably promoting most of this. But anytime something happens, you know, it has to be either the best or yeah. has to be compared to what's been done before. <laughs> what You know, what what have you. And like you said, I'm, I'm kind of with you where it's not even a, a fair comparison. You're playing a different game, different time. There's just too many different variables. And that doesn't discount by any means what what she's accomplished in in her you know in in her game and what she's done in her career so i just don't get how you can't separate the two and understand that and it's not like you said it's not dissuading anybody from you know being a fan of hers i just seen that so much as if you know i don't know it became like the cool thing to do is to you know be a a a mega fan of hers all of a sudden uh Mm -hmm. when you probably never watched a women's game before and you won't watch it again so you're not really doing much to promote it Uh, you're just kind of along for the ride so i don't know how that you know, put you in any better light than someone that's saying that this isn't, you know, the true scoring record, which, you know, whether it is or isn't, to me, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like you said, it's, we're, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm with you here. It's just a, it's a different thing, but we just got to have these discussions over and over. And no matter what the topic is, it has to be A, B, and pick your side and jump, stand on one side or otherwise, you know. Uh, you're against me. You're my enemy. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really stupid. It's like who, who honestly cares? Like that. I mean, if you score that many points, it, no one, no one can say anything or do anything to you know, discredit what you've done. And yeah, just, yeah. I mean, I thought that anybody that's accomplished that spends too much time thinking of what other people think about their. And if they do, I don't. I guess maybe that's what motivates them. But other than that, I don't think they care too much when you've when you get to that level of excellence yeah they don't care what joe blow on facebook has to say about uh, the, the the record <laughs> i i had a guy in an office uh, come to me and say you know you just brought it up he's like hey what do you think about this you know what's the discussion and that was kind of his point he's like you know we, i just try you know you try to say something about it or you try to discuss it and and say how it's different and everybody's like, well, you're just you a hater. Women, yeah. You're yeah, a yeah, hater. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, right. I'm not. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just talking about the game. You know, it's, right. it's a fun thing to talk about because it is different. You know, even if it was, you know, even if the guy did play another season, you know, we'd still have the discussion because the game was so different. I mean, it is what it is. It's just, uh, but yeah, uh, I, I guess it's a good thing, that, a good argument for her to, to have to be involved in, you know, at the end of the day. And like you said, she probably doesn't care anyways, but, um, you know, it, it's it's got to be, I I think it does have to be hard for her in a respect, especially lately with all these records kind of coming one after another, and she's out there probably not really caring that much and wants to play ball with her team and wants to win. You know that's much more so probably what she's concerned about. Yeah, that's probably going to be in the back of your mind. You're going to hear about it all the time because that's what everybody talks about. But you know you still want to go out there and just play as best you can and, and win the games and and you got to set all that stuff aside and i guess you know that's what comes with the territory when you're you know an excellent player but uh she's figuring it out and she's doing fine uh it's going to be interesting to see i guess how that career closes uh you know she's already made the announcement as we mentioned last time to move on to play professionally after this as well uh so she could have really even made the argument that much more fun if she would have stayed in that covid year then we really would have had an argument after that but <laughs> it, it, uh, she's reached that mark and uh, she owns that you know that title for now uh, i mean the weird thing to me is just we've seen it i mean i guess at the pro level maybe it feels different it's still kind of weird to me that just celebrities and musicians actors whatever they may be <laughs> using this as like their opportunity to like be seen and pretend mm-hmm. like they're like a part of the whole experience <laughs> of course you had you know jake from state farm was there and uh travis scott you know rolls up trying to 
a pedal is seltzer i guess he has his own kind of <laughs> his own brand of seltzer okay. <laughs> and just i mean of course we saw in the nfl with a you know you know maybe a relationship maybe not uh just in you know we saw it in other sports too it just i don't know to me that as a i'm not even going to say like a peers but just someone that all i care about is the game and sports like just a true sports fan uh that's the kind of shit that i just i just it kind of pisses me off. It's just really annoying because it has nothing to do with the game or the competition at all. Um, so that's kind of where I, I I don't like how that that lines become blurred of like, you know, almost like a damn TMZ or <laughs> reality TV uh, into the actual like uh, a legitimate, you know, sporting event. Like that's kind of where I just like as a, you know, someone that's not really invested in the team or the athlete. That's what I'm just like, I'm not even going to watch because all they're going to do is show these idiots on the in their, you know, courtside seats and. You know what? What does that have to do with the game anyway? Yeah, well, yeah, and that, that's a that's a good, I guess, a good talking point to to point out too. It's just like, how has this become like every anything that is remotely possible or popular, everybody flocks in and they want to get their hooks right. into it somehow. You know, they want to get involved. Like you said, they just want to be seen. Uh, you know, you can't tell me that. You know, a, a guy that's involved in the hip hop industry is in looking up his ticket flights to Iowa City and the end of the women's basketball season on a normal year. Yeah. That, that ain't happening. Yeah, <laughs> so. uh, just, I like to see his, uh, you know, t- ticket purchasing history. Maybe he's been a season ticket holder, his, his cousin's an <laughs> alum or something, but I don't, uh, I don't see that. And it's, I, I guess maybe, maybe I'm not as uh, tied into, you know, who he's there to watch, but I, I guess I don't really see much of a connection there either. So yeah. it's one thing if they're, you know, maybe from that area or, you know, went yeah. to school there or something like that. I mean, if Big E was in the house from WWE, something like that, I'd be like, okay, yeah. he played football there, you mm-hmm. know, whatever. But uh, if there's no – and that's just kind of where, where I'm out on that. Like, if you like it, fine. You want to, you know, watch your little pop stars and do your reality. That's good. <laughs> do do what you got to do. But uh, I'm, I'm not going to be involved with that. I'll find something else that, to, to gamble on or something else to watch. Maybe this is some uh, maybe this is some backdoor collective NIO crap that's going on. You know, they're they're kind of funneling these guys in. Hey, let's get some eyeballs on this stuff. Come on, come on in here. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> it's wild. It would make more sense than uh, what what the real reason is. Yeah, probably true. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> oh man, I didn't know he had a seltzer. Well, that's good. I won't try it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, another uh, topic I wanted to bring up in the the sports world. I guess we're going to move on a little bit from basketball here, uh, back into football. Uh, we'll start in the NFL. We're going to transition into a couple of things we might touch on on college football too. But uh, the announcement was official today uh, that uh, Jason Kelsey has now retired from the Philadelphia Eagles after 13 seasons of you know playing some pretty excellent football. Uh, you know, I normally just wouldn't bring up, I guess, you know, a guy retiring, but certainly is a, uh, has been a figure that's been pretty influential, I guess, in the sports world and the sports media world, too, just from what he's he's been able to do now. You know, him and his brother decide to, to start a podcast. I don't know that they knew it was going to be anything that was as big as it has become. Um, and they certainly have become pretty influential on that front. And, and I'm, I'm guessing that's what he's going to continue to kind of, you know, thrive in and, and be able to, to to do some things further from that. Uh, just kind of what he's been able to gain and his experience and the people he knows now. But, uh, you know, you, you look at him and I, I, I just I think it's a, a good example of what uh, most people, I think, like in an athlete. You know, a guy that uh, really just cared about his the game, cared about his team, seems to really obviously care about his family, uh, the right things. You know, it wasn't about the BS. I mean, yeah, you, I guess you could, you know, there were some people that criticized, like, you know, how he acted at the the parade and, you know, some of the antics, uh, you know, on, on his own personal time when he's having fun. But I think that's part of the endearing part of him, too. So I'm not going to take anything away from him there, but uh you know, it's it's cool to see when a guy cares that much. And if you saw any of the press conference here today, it was you know really emotional for him, and to, you could tell that he really cared about being around the people and not just the not just the game itself too. So I, I just think it's a you know a cool guy to to maybe look at look up to for for some of the young kids that are maybe coming into the game. Well, then just um, you know, st- staying in one spot too during your career is like kind of unheard of these days. So that was another thing that was kind of a unique situation there. I'm not saying this is his planner in in his mind right now, but I I could see maybe someone snagging him up there uh, come playoff time this year, so he stays ready because you know hopefully 
as far as you know linemen go you know stay stay in as much shape as you can because it'd be nice to maybe see him get scooped up by a, a contender next season if if that's something he wants to do i don't know what the contract is and that type of thing but there's always ways around it retiring is usually one of those ways but uh yeah, it's not like he's going to be going anywhere. You'll see him plenty, especially with uh, with his brother. Should, I'm sure he'll attend some games and also just with, uh, with, with the podcast deal. So, uh, yeah, pretty uh, – pre- you know, we don't kind of see linemen in that – I don't even call it spotlight, but just yeah. not – they're not they're not really known typically unless it's like sometimes for bad things or, <laughs> or, just, or, or it's just like some kind of, you know, incredibly like, you know, like a, you know, a huge individual. Like I can remember that lineman that played – for the Chiefs a few years back, that was like almost seven foot tall or whatever. Yeah, uh, was, was a villain of waiver or something like uh-huh. that. He was, yeah. So just something like, but you don't usually even like put a face to the name or anything. You just kind of see the backs of them and you know kind of get pissed off when they miss a block. But other than that, you don't really. You know, so it's it's cool to kind of maybe have a, a little bit more of a backdrop because, I mean, if anybody that knows football, it does starts and ends with that that line, the offensive line and the defensive line. That's kind of where the, where your money's made. They might not get all the accolades, but that's uh. That that's kind of that's that's going to be the the strength of your team or lack thereof if if you don't have a solid line on either side of the ball. Yeah, that's very true. Brought brought some attention to, to that portion of the field for sure. You know, for yeah, something that doesn't get a lot of attention very often. And you know, and a guy that had to to change positions in college to get to that point. You know, he was playing linebacker when they said, "Hey, maybe be a good center." And, you know, obviously that, that worked out very well for him. He, it was funny in the press conference today, he talked about how, you know, the everybody hated him at first and he didn't have a very good start to his career. He thought he was like kind of struggling a lot. And then he had one really good off season where a coach pushed him and, you know, he got a lot better and obviously became, you know, he's going to be endeared in that town forever now because of what he did um, and, 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 you know, helped them get to, get to the top of the mountain there once and then got uh, close again when he lost to his brother. So uh, he's just a, 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 a kind of a charismatic individual and, and really is, uh, yeah, brought some good attention uh, to the game of football. So it's it's always cool to to see those guys, you know, have their success. That's for sure. Ain't um, going to be buying any cheesesteaks anytime soon either. He's going to be uh, living live large in that city. I mean, any oh, tab yeah. he wants is going to be taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was funny. He he mentioned uh, uh, early on in his career, I guess somebody had opened up this bar that must have been close to like the facility or whatever, and they'd have mm-hmm. their Thursday Thursday meetups. He's like, "Well, the place was only in business for six months because nobody ever paid for a drink." But <laughs> it brought me some great it's lifetime memories. <laughs> uh, pretty cool, uh, and that's and that's I think what people like to see too, and it, it's the it's the other side of what we don't see in sports anymore. You know, obviously the college game has changed so much. It's hard to see a guy that is there at your school for more than a couple of years. So it's hard to get attached to him. Um, the end, like you said, in the professional game, pretty rare that a guy stays in one spot for his entire career. So I think that's what, you know, even made him a bigger, uh, get, got him more attention was because, you know, you you endear yourself to a city and you kind of become part of it. And I think that's cool to see everybody loves, you know, to have a little bit of sense of community there as well. Uh, moving on into a couple of other quick topics here, just with kind of quick hitters here for you in the college football world. Uh, one thing, uh, that has been, uh, talked about now are some changes, uh, as far as some rules are concerned. And these are kind of NFL type of things that'll be going on. Uh, They've talked now about having the ability for both an offensive and a defensive player to have in-helmet communication with the sidelines. So putting some, you know, uh, uh, headsets inside of the helmets, just like we see in the NFL. Uh, They're talking about, you know, having a time window when that'll be legal and they'll stop it up to a certain point when the play starts and all all that. And then also having kind of a two-minute warning type deal in the college game as well, which, you know, yeah, like we kind of talked about beforehand, not necessarily something we love in the NFL game, but I guess, you know, maybe it's something too that is a little bit of a counteraction to the other rule changes that we've had with the timing in, in college football too. So we, you know, kind of gotten, you had some of those scenarios now where the clock runs where it didn't used to. So maybe that's a little bit of a counteraction gives you a little bit of that extra kind of two minute drill deal at the end of the half. Uh, but interesting, you know, and the game's kind of morph. And I think as time goes on, you'll probably see them come closer and closer to being the same game and the same rules. Um, and that's kind of what we're getting here. Yeah, it seems to one of those things, though. I know we're 
maybe well, it was last season, two years ago, we're kind of getting those really long games, and there's a lot of talk about you know games are being too long and too many commercials. It seems like a two minute warning is just that another commercial break, but <laughs> maybe it won't be. Who knows? Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm I, I I was fine kind of with the way it was. I know stopping every first down got to be a little much, so I'm not. I kind of did appreciate. I was kind of behind that rule to make it where it's only been the last two minutes, but. I don't know. It kind of seems like we're in a good place, but uh, probably some kind of rationale behind it. I do like the helmet deal, though, just with all the yeah. BS of last year with Michigan. It's just like we can just <laughs> yeah, put that to rest like, and yeah. not have to deal with it exactly. and just kind of move right. on and not worry about it. Yeah, that, and that's probably exactly what that is, a direct counter you know, to the, those types of situations. Don't have to worry as much about the, the signage and all that anymore, and maybe we won't have so many guys that are – paid to hold up blocker things on the sidelines anymore. That'd be kind of neat. <laughs> Cause that gets when pretty you look annoying at, too. <laughs> you look at, yeah. You look at some of those sidelines. I mean, obviously every stadium is different, whatever your school allows, but I mean, you got, you know, there's no, there's no empty, there's, you can't see any green on some of those sidelines. There's so many people down there. <laughs> is there really that many on staff? Cause there's, there's limits to that. So, uh, yeah. you know, who yeah. knows what all those people down there are doing. I know you got visitors here and there, but still like, seems like there's a, a good chunk of people on most of those sidelines. So, Maybe they'll still uh, remedy some of that. Very true. Uh, another thing that uh, was brought up as well um, is they're, they're continuing to have discussions about how this new playoff is going to morph when it turns to 14 teams. Obviously, we, we just discussed recently on the show about the, the one that's going to be implemented this year, finally having some full set of rules. Now they're arguing about what's going to change in a couple of years when they move it to a 14 team instead of the 12 team. Um, you know, of course, because we've got it you know, mess with something right away before we even see the other one. But the the talks are, and, and some people have raised a little bit of stink, I think, that uh, the Big Ten and the SEC will have, their champions would have an automatic buy the way that works in the new setup. Um, of course, then we're, they're also arguing about how many teams are going to be out of each conference and who's going to have the, you know, automatic qualifications. Uh, that's all going to get hashed out. I mean, I think at the end of the day uh, – Obviously, those two conferences have grown themselves to a point where they're so large that they have that influence. And if, if that's something that's really a huge sticking point that they want to win that argument, they're probably going to win it because uh, they've, they've got the they've got the teams and they've got the you know kind of influence to, to, to do that. Um, at the end of the day, it's probably not going to change a whole hell of a lot because those two teams probably are going to be two of the, the best teams in the country. You would expect that. Uh, but uh, they'll all hash it all out, but it's definitely an interesting talking point moving forward. Yeah, I guess just a way to keep keep it on the front of the mind. It seems like an, the only reason to bring it up because, like you said, it'll kind of work its work itself out eventually in in the long run. And just even on the field, if like if if those you know whoever wins you know, whatever what are we like four major conferences now three whatever three whatever they're calling it whoever wins those is definitely going to be worthy of it. So whether you want to call it an automatic or not. Uh, they're going to be in and they're going to probably be most likely at least two or three of them get, getting a buy depending on how it's the bracket plays out because as far as I've known, I haven't seen any type of how, what kind of, I know they're talking about who's getting in and who's not, but as far as the actual format of the bracket, I mean, that remains to be determined. So who yeah. knows how many buys they're going to be in, you know, the locations and all that type of thing. I know we talked about some campus locations, which would be, we're looking forward to that, but just there's a lot to be determined. So let's, uh, Let's just get through, uh, get through the first, you know, year, and then we'll go from there. How about yeah, that? That's true. Yeah, long ways off. A lot of things are going to change by then. I'm sure. Uh, we, we we've yet to see the the end of of wacky changes and, and moves. I'm, I I know that. Um, another thing too that uh, we just mentioned real quick is kind of interesting. Uh, the uh, NCAA football game is finally coming out uh, here this year. And, of course, it's been a long-awaited kind of thing. People that love the game have been looking forward to it for a long time. And then, of course, athletes now are looking forward to it as well because it has become a a source of a little bit of income because they have to pay all these guys to use their uh, name, image, and likeness on the the, uh, game. They said that over 10,000 athletes have signed up to do just that, uh, which you would expect. I mean, most guys are going to say, yeah, that's the thing. It's cool to see themselves on a video game. Hell, I'd do it. Uh, so, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's what's going on. And it's cool. I guess to see all those guys getting a little bit of a, you know, shake of that after we've all the shit we've been through over the years. I mean, I'll be there. Like I'm when first day it comes out, I'm, I'm buying, I don't really care the cost. Cause it's been so long since I've been able to play it. I'm, you know, whatever it may be, but I just thought it was kind of funny. Like, when they finally announced, like, you know, it's good to go and it's, it's got their 
you know, a, a agreement reached with the athletes. It was like what a few hundred, like 300 bucks or mm-hmm. something in a copy of the game. I'm like, bro, like that was that difficult. Like, yeah. I'm, this is I'm, what we're fighting I'm not about. Saying, you know, yeah. I'm not saying it should be more or less. I don't even care what, but th- it was just kind of funny that it had to be this, you know, what t- decade plus long ordeal. Yeah. And, you know, I understand like NAL is a newer thing, but it was, it was, you know, all this, you know, so it's such a, you know, dramatic, you know, charade i guess you'd call it and it's just like uh here's a few hundred bucks and here's the game like (laughs) that's all we needed to do like i think we could have probably figured that out a long long ago especially a company like you know ea sports like the the revenue sharing is not exactly like a a a new thing to them like i'm sure they can you know figure that over the over the you know lunch break so yeah (laughs) it was just funny that when i saw that i was like uh i I was i understand there's just so many players so you can't really you know go too high on the dollar amount but It was just funny that that's when you saw it. You like I, I definitely verified that a couple places because I'm like, is that is that really what the agreement was? But that's how it is. But uh, you know, I'm glad we're getting the game though. It's been, it's been a while. I look forward to playing that again. Yeah. yeah. Well, hell, back in the day, if you would have just went as far as giving the guys like fifty bucks in the game, oh, the, O'Bannon, yeah. the O'Bannon lawsuit never would have happened probably because they've been like, oh yeah, cool. <laughs> you might have got away with just a copy of the game, honestly. Yeah, uh, you that might have been enough because you think about like late '90s, early 2000s. Those games were that's kind of when they mm-hmm. started jumping up to being like fifty. I remember when I first saw the game, forty nine ninety nine. I was like. I might have to find what a new hobby. Yeah. Like I don't know <laughs> too much because <laughs> I mean, especially in college, I like, ain't got that. Cause I ain't oh, got those okay. kind of funds. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, man. Am I, am I gonna eat lunch uh, for the rest of the semester? Or am I gonna buy this game? Uh, <laughs> another topic I wanted to bring up real quick here as well. Um, this has been an ongoing saga, and we've talked about this a bunch on the the, the show, um, and, and maybe have never gotten real hugely deep dived into it, but. Um, the, this, it's been interesting because it started right in, in my backyard here in the state. Uh, Iowa, Iowa state athletes were the ones that were initially targeted by the state DCI, uh, as far as a gambling probe is concerned. Um, part of that was because they had initially discovered some guys were doing things under age, which, you know, is a whole other thing. Obviously we don't condone doing that. Uh, but then it became, of course, guys were betting, you know, on, other sports or their sport in some cases and even their games in some cases, which, you know, we, we, we've argued, I guess, a little bit about, you know, the, the, the smarts and doing things like that. But at the end of the day, you know, some of the, some of the ways that this information was gathered as I've kind of followed it over time, weren't probably necessarily on the up and up. Uh, they used a company that uses uh, kind of geofencing technology to understand where these bets are being placed and where they're coming from. Uh, and then they ended up targeting, you know, of course, school facilities to be able to try to figure that out. Now, from there, then they determine what those numbers are. And then that's how they're tracking down who these individuals are if they're using a false name. You know, a lot of times you got tracked to a card that was used to pay. Um, and, you know, you don't get around that. That's pretty evident. So <laughs> you're going to lose that argument. But, uh, you know, a lot of the athletes were like, hey, you know, this started all kind of on false pretenses and and all in the wrong, you know, mindset. Uh, So they had pushed and pushed to kind of get some things out in the open and and drop the charges. And now eventually it has come out that the rest of the guys that were still kind of caught up in this, uh, the prosecutors have dropped those charges because I don't think they want to go through that fight and that argument anymore on whether this stuff was gathered, you know, correctly. Now, it's unfortunate for a bunch of guys that were already involved, and it's still unfortunate for the guys that were anyways because they've lost their year. You know, most of these guys had to sit out a year and didn't get to play anyways. But uh, there were others that had already kind of like given themselves up. You know, they pleaded, you know, pleaded out to a lesser charge or whatever, you know, false inform- giving false information, those kinds of things just to get a- over with and done. Uh, but some other guys that were still kind of fighting it, now the charges have been dropped. So they, they, they're free to kind of, you know, move on and do whatever they want with their lives. Uh, it just kind of at the end of the day, it really sucks, you know, for those that got caught up in it. Um, some of them, you know, probably deserved a. Uh, some sort form of punishment because of the things, the decisions and choices they did make, especially if it was an underage situation or if you were betting on your own games, we, we kind of get that. Uh, but for some of the others that maybe were just betting on some other sports, you know, yeah, it really is kind of heartbreaking in for them, but I guess at least they get a touch of resolution to it. 
Yeah, different circumstances, of course, but kind of just like the last thing we touched on, like all this. I mean, it wasn't as long, but, you know, kind of a drawn out process to kind of get to the point that they finally got to. The thing, you know, the thing that sticks out to me a lot is is you think like, why, why didn't they just go, you know, bet at, the, bet at the window or whatever? And obviously, if you're underage, you're not going to do that, of course. Mm-hmm. But, if, you know, a brother, a cousin, a, a mom, a sister, whatever, helping you out and they're of age. You know, why wouldn't you just go to the window? And I think the you know, the benefits or the convenience of the mobile betting that we kind of a lot of people enjoy and, you know, take advantage of is kind of what got end up getting them in trouble or getting at least, you know, found out was because it's it's so it's so easily traced. You don't think you don't you know, you're using the app and you're like, oh, no one knows who I am. But mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> it's very easy to get to the bottom of. And that's, you know, part of the reason why it, it's regulating, you know, the, the, the gaming industry as a whole. So that's why so many states have gotten it approved is because they can you know, go through and show the, you know, the, the, the old crotchety old senators who are so anti-gambling, they can show them, you know, here, you know, I'll find this guy lives here, does this, spends this much, bets this much, wins this much, whatever. Um, it's very easy to, to regulate it and find, you know, kind of stay on top of who's on the up and up and who's not. So I guess the, the benefits, you know, kind of was turned out to be a, a convenience, I'd say not the benefits, the convenience kind of, you know, was what did them in, I suppose, in the long run, but yeah. I mean, we obviously, you know, play regularly and enjoy gambling, but if you're doing anything to to, to cheat the system or to, you know, if you're not doing it the right way, you're going to get found out. I mean, there's, there's no way around it. Like you might mm-hmm. win a few times or get, you know, get by for a little while, but it, it, there's no, there's just, there's just not a way to get away with it in the long run. So uh, I guess that may be a lesson learned and just move on. And I'm sure they're probably not able to uh, play in that state, at least for, for some time at, at the minimum. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, like you said, there, there's lots of, uh, uh, I guess, kind of smarts of behind it. You know, you got to use your head a little bit, too, and and know that this is something that you shouldn't be doing. They all knew that, and then, you know, so at the end of the day, I don't think anybody feels, like, super bad for any of these right. guys, but at the same time, we, we kind of understand how, for a few of them, it just seems silly, you know, that others could do it and they can't, and I don't know. It's, it's definitely an interesting line that's being drawn out there for sure. Uh, the one thing I did find interesting in the story and how this kind of played down the road a little bit was uh, the the company that they were using, the DCI, to use this software to kind of geo-track where stuff was coming from. They no longer have a contract with them uh, because they said that they violated uh, you know conditions of being able to use it properly. So obviously there was some shit going on there that they, they have to sort out themselves. But, uh, you know, uh, we... we you should probably know that too. That 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 law enforcement is going to go to ends, uh, all ends, to to figure out what you're doing too. So, uh, they 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 have to live with that a little bit. Uh, I know there there's not a whole heck of a lot that we can really uh, play for you here on the show this week, just because uh, that's the way this thing works. Uh, unfortunately, with the gambling wise, I do see some lines have far, finally started to trickle in here coming up for. Uh, the next uh, couple of nights. There are, of course, some games going on here uh, this evening as well. Uh, And I do have to say I'm feeling pretty good about something I played a little bit earlier here this evening now that I look at the scores. Uh, I had uh, Texas was getting seven points at Baylor, and I just thought, you know, they beat Baylor the first time. Seven's a lot for a rivalry game, and they're up 11 right now. So I'm feeling pretty good about that one here the rest of the night. Hopefully that holds on. (laughs) I was with you on that one. I only got six and a half though, so I'm kind of oh, I'm man. a little bit. I should have went to your book tonight. Like, <laughs> so uh, I also went through something on the the Clippers tonight. They were uh, getting five and a half points as well. And last check, they had a a, a decent lead. Uh, let's see where they at now. Yeah, they're up by ten there, about the end of the third quarter. So looking good there. And uh, another prop I played tonight was uh, Anthony Davis did that combo again. Uh, points, rebounds, assists. I went over 42 and a half, so we'll keep an eye on that one tonight. Obviously, by the time this is uh, posted, those games will be complete. But uh, we're looking good right now, so uh, let's hope it stays that way. Yeah, I like that. Uh, obviously, we'll put some more stuff out there as the week goes on. Uh, SJ did a really great job of that last week, uh, putting stuff up there for you almost every day that he was looking at. So uh, follow on uh, Twitter. Uh, at SJM Bets at Cherokee CP, and we'll put that stuff out there for you. Uh, the ones that I saw that have popped up here, I'm just not, I'm not feeling uh, I'm not feeling a good way about them here yet. Uh, I usually like to look at what's going on in top 25 and Big 12 games and college hoops, but uh, you know Kansas has got a 10 and a half point line right now laying against K State in that Sunflower Showdown at home, but. 
boy, Kansas has laid some big turds here lately. So I eh, <laughs> that one that's one I'm probably going to stay away from. I just don't don't feel real good about uh, where that's going to go. I know they're going to get on track at some point, but uh, I just don't I don't love that yet. Uh, Not on your dime, at least. Yeah, no, you're not willing uh, to take that risk. <laughs> no. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, the only one I saw, like just quick glance, the top twenty-five one. Uh, right now, uh, Illinois is actually a favorite against Purdue tomorrow night, so I might do something with that. I also would look at that total. Um, like I, like you said, we'll get something out there tomorrow on the on the social media channels. But uh, that's one I just saw that really caught my eye. Being a be, Purdue, Purdue being an underdog at this point in the season is they've kind of hit their stride. I think. Like I don't. Yeah. I think the upsets are behind them, and they've really been dominant in many ways so i might you know take a look at that one but uh we'll 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 get some we'll get some good out there for you i mean it's called every day we're covering so we have to cover every day so (laughs) i figure we better get our axe in gear (laughs) yeah we better live up to the damn show name that's for sure uh just real quick i did see uh, i'll probably play this tomorrow oklahoma's laying four and a half at home against cincinnati i like that oklahoma's been playing tough here lately uh, damn bastards didn't come through for me the other day, though. I'm knocking off Houston, but uh, <laughs> that was a wild ass finish in that game. Uh, but uh, yeah, that'll be a fun one to, to, to keep an eye on there as well. So yeah, we'll put them all out there for you online. Follow that, and of course, listen to the program and all the different various platforms, and uh, give us some feedback. Or whether you, uh, of course, we'd love it if you like, subscribe. Uh, share all that good stuff there for you, whatever platform you may use. It's available pretty much everywhere. Uh, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, uh, YouTube. Uh, You can find it in all those locations. So uh, keep listening to the show. We appreciate it. Give us uh, some topics if you'd like. Give us some beer recommendations if you'd like, and we will follow along. Uh, We'll have some fun with it. That's SJ Munoz. I'm Chris Parks. Thanks for joining us for another week of Every Day We're Covering. We'll see you next week for some more covers.